Hi everyone, I'm uh, Cliff Kinoti from Agriculture Victoria and uh, today I'm going to talk about tomato spotted wilt virus, uh, which is a very important virus uh, across the world, including uh, Australia. And uh, so tomato spotted wilt belongs to uh, this genus of virus known as Tospor viruses and they're characterized by uh, uh, circular uh, rings, that's an uh, electron uh, microscope image. And it was first reported in Australia in tomatoes in 1915 in the Werribee and Bacchus Marsh area. And since then it's found all over the world. So uh, tomato spotted wilt is very important because of its broad host range. It can infect more than uh, 2000 species of plants. And these include commercial hosts uh, such as vegetables, such as beans, capsicum, lettuce, peas, and tomatoes. And also it infects a lot of uh, other ornamentals. Uh, it's also found in a lot of weeds that are found uh, across Australia, such as the cape weed, pigweed, nightshades, and salt thistles, and the wild lettuce. And most of the weeds act as an alternative source for the virus. So in terms of transmission, uh, tomato spotted weed is transmitted uh, mainly by three types of thrips, the western flower thrips, uh, tomato thrips, and the onion thrips. But it's the western flower thrips that's a huge problem because it's very effective in transmitting the virus. The life cycle of uh, thrips as from egg to adults uh, takes around 20 to 30 days, but this is all temperature dependent. At higher temperature above 30, it can go as low, it can take as uh, long as 10 days or even 15 days, depending on the yeah, variation of the temperature. So for, uh, thrips can only acquire uh, the virus in their larva stage, that's uh, when they're uh, feeding uh, on infected plant material. And uh, from then on, when they become adults, they, have, uh, they can transmit the virus for the rest of their lives, which is around, uh, they live for around 20 to 30 days. And this is what makes it uh, a very effective vector in transmitting tomato spotted wilt because the rest of its life, it can jump from crop to crop transmitting the virus. In terms of uh, disease symptoms, these are wholly dependent on the plant host and also a variety. But uh, some of the general symptoms here initially include uh, dullness and bronze color in uh, the leaves. And then the plants start becoming yellowing and uh, necrotic spots start forming, which is followed by stunting. And sometimes you of often see some twisting of leaves. This generally leads to wilting and eventually a, a plant death. However, in, uh, in some uh, plants like uh, lettuces, when they're infected, when they're uh, real, uh, small, there's no heart formation, and this uh, leads to a severe internal necrosis and a lot of stunting, as you can see in one of these images in the middle here. So as part of uh, the project that I'm involved in, which is a hot innovation funded project on vegetable uh, viruses and bacteria. We've been looking, uh, surveying for viruses, including tomato spotted wilt across uh, Victoria vegetable growing region. And one of the areas that we've been visiting was a uh, Gippsland area, which we visited uh, in 2018 and 2019. Unfortunately, this year we've not been able to visit Gippsland because of uh, the movement restrictions. So in the Gippsland area, we found tomato spotted wilts in beans, peas, lettuces, and uh, a lot of tomato spotted wilts in weeds but the incidents have been very low in uh, Gippsland area. And we think this is generally maybe due to the uh, drier than normal condition in the past two years, which keeps the weed pressure down. And there's less alternative hosts where the thrips and the virus can be, uh, the thrips can get the virus into the farms. On the other hand, in the Melbourne region, um, we've been detecting a lot of uh, tomato spotted wheels that's uh, mm -hmm. uh, there around the Werribee area and also uh, the Bacchus Marsh area. And the incidence is quite high. And we think maybe generally this is because of new developments that are coming uh, closer to these uh, vegetable growing regions. And with new developments, uh, there's ornamentals and other plants that are grown by in the new houses that are being uh, uh, developed. And, there's a spillover of thrips and also the disease may, uh, may be into the farms and causing a huge problem. So due to this uh, high incidence and also severe outbreaks that we've been observing in uh, the Melbourne region, we decided to do a survey starting uh, 2019 to early this year during the spring into summer 2020 and to just try and see if there's any weather events or what might be associated to this high incidence and sometimes outbreak of tomato spotted wheels. 
And one thing we realize is that uh, with the increase in temperature from spring into summer, we can see an increase in the number of thrips that we are capturing from our, our traps that you're putting out in uh, lettuce paddocks. And uh, this shows that uh, with the increase in temperature, there's a reduction in the time of uh, the life cycle. So you're getting more thrips and more thrips becoming active. And this in turn uh, leads to an increase in the incidence of tomato spotted wilt, as you can see in the uh, graph below. Where you can see uh, in green, that's the cost letters. And in red, that's uh, the colored letters. And in blue, that's uh, the number of thrips. And you can see around December to January, we had uh, the highest incidence of thrips in this particular property. And then there was a short fall in the number of thrips, and this was due to a high rainfall. But a few weeks after this high incidence of thrips, we had a massive outbreak of tomato spotted wilt. Almost 100% uh, of a block of lettuce was wiped out, and the grower didn't have any alternative than to just remove all the crops, and that's why there's a fall in the number of thrips. And then another thing we saw is that uh, thrips tend to prefer the green lettuce more than the colored lettuces. And when there was a removal of the green lettuces after the outbreak, we could see that thrips now moved to the red lettuce because they have to feed, they're looking for other sources of food and they started seeing a gradual increase in, uh, in the incidence of tomatoes. So this is just preliminary data from our survey. Unfortunately, it was interrupted this year by restriction, but we're hoping to restart again. Uh, this survey and also see what we can come up at the end of uh, our project. So in terms of control and management of tomato spotted wilt, the most important thing first of all is to remove the source of the virus and the vector. Weed control is very important because of uh, the wide host rate of uh, tomato spotted wilt and also the western flower thrips. Previous studies which have shown a reduction of to less than 10% when there's weed control. And these are this very important to keep the uh, pressure of weeds down. And this is especially a problem outside the farms, which where you get spillovers into the farms. Another important thing that uh, we found, which is important managing tomato spotted wheel is a removal of uh, leftover crops after harvesting, because this acts as the source of infection to any subsequent planting of uh, any vegetable crop. And also another important thing is also to avoid contaminated or infected seedlings, which can bring the disease and also bring the vector into, into, into the agricultural blocks. Another important thing is also an in, having an integrated approach to trips management. And one of the most important things to do always in a block of uh, vegetable is uh, thrips monitoring either by sticky traps, which is very important because it tells the growth uh, the amount of uh, insect or vector pressure that you're having in particular field. And this will inform the grower on what management option they need to take or when to put any management uh, measures. Other things are cultural techniques such as good crop rot uh, rotation and also planting schedules. And this is especially crop rotation, which you've seen, especially in uh, Gippsland, where they have very, uh, they have substantial blocks of land. They can do their crop rotation uh, very well, and this reduces the pressure of uh, tomato spotted wheat spilling over to the next crop. Other important thing is use of biological controls, and these are uh, your predatory mites or predatory thrips, which are very effective in putting the uh, pressure very put in putting the population of thrips, uh, pressure on the population of thrips and also appropriate chemicals can, can be used when they're necessary. Other things that can be used to manage uh, tomato spotted wheels is use of uh, resistance or tolerant varieties. I'm not sure in terms of lettuces uh, if there are any uh, about their uh, varieties, if there are any resistance or tolerant, but uh, other vegetable crops, you see, they have a lot of resistant varieties, and this can be a good option when you're having massive outbreaks of tomato spotted wheels. And another important thing is uh, disease identification. It needs to be accurate for you to know how to manage what uh, the diseases that you're having. And some of uh, the tools that are out there in, uh, for using the diagnostics include uh, some of these test strips, which, is, which are very easy to use. And you just squash the plant and put the test strip in, and it will tell you if uh, your plant has uh, tomato spotted wilt or any other virus. 
And also the other molecular detection tools, which are more specific and uh, they can still also be used in, in the field. In terms of lab diagnostics, uh, in the life of this project that we're involving, uh, vegetable project, we, uh, any growers can con uh, contact us within Victoria for lab testing and we'll do it absolutely free and it will be covered by the project. And we'll leave our details, uh, which will be sent in and follow up email. So it'll be easy for any growers or any interested party to contact us. I'd like uh, to acknowledge uh, Agriculture Victoria group that have been involved in this project. Uh, Queensland group and also some private consultants who have been involved in this project. Thank you.